Greetings, fellow humans. I am Hugh. And I am Man. And together we are definitely not two, two kobolds, kobolds in, in a, a trench coat. coat. We enjoy human activities, such as paying taxes, having existential crises, and RPG horror, horror stories. stories. Let's see what we've got today. Hi everyone, just wanted to take a minute to thank you all for your support. It means a lot to us. Thank you for your likes, comments, and subscriptions. We really appreciate it. Friendly reminder, if you have not subscribed yet, please do. It appeases the algorithm gods and helps our channel grow. And remember to turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss when we put out a new video. We try and do one every week. And thank you guys so much for your support so far. Fireball Enthusiast Demands Infinite Spell Slots by Boulder Guy. If anything, this story just proves that just because someone is a friend doesn't mean they'll make a good D&D player. Because a couple of months ago, a friend of mine wanted to play D&D with our group and well, this experience honestly makes me question his intelligence. And I don't mean his D&D stats. We were all level 6 by this point, which worked out perfectly for him since Fireball was practically the only spell he knew from D&D and he was obsessed with it. He rolled up a Goliath Sorcerer and of course he chose Fireball along with a bunch of other fire-based spells and cantrips. He said that his character was basically more like a firebender than a real sorcerer. This was a bit eyebrow raising. I mean, it's possible to play a character like that, but it's gonna be hard for a new player to play such a specific anime inspired spellcaster like that. Nevertheless, he rolled up his sorcerer and jumped right in. So what is a firebender? So this is from the anime Avatar and there are four different types of, of elemental benders. Fire, earth, water and air. And this is, ba it, I've never really watched it, but I know that it's like a manipulation of that particular element. Okay. I'm guessing that it's going to go a little further than that based on the title and the fact that this is a horror story. But I don't actually hate that idea in general. I think that's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, if no one was allowed to ever create a character based on an anime concept or character, then there would be a lot less D&D characters in the world. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. We were all at the tail end of a dungeon crawl when the sorcerer joined the party. We made it to the dungeon boss fairly quickly and from that point on, it would become readily apparent that the sorcerer was a one-trick pony. Every turn, he used fireball even when he could have easily done what he needed to do with cantrips or lower level spells without blasting the party, but at least it got the job done. But this trend continued even after the boss battle with him using fireball to break down doors, fight low level enemies, light candles and bonfires, to rob random campers we encountered, etc, etc. To him, the answer to any problem was fireball. We even at several points would kindly remind him that he has limited spell slots and sorcery points, to which he would just say, I don't worry about stuff like that. Wait, what? You don't worry about your spell slots as a sorcerer? Not entirely sure they're that concerned with the rules at this point. Yeah, no, especially if you're using fireball to break down doors. I'm more concerned about the lighting of candles with that. That's just blows up the whole candle rather than lights it right it would just melt the whole candle i would imagine we all know that doors are the ultimate bbeg of DD &D and occasionally might require a fireball they might even deserve it that's true but a candle maybe it was a, a mimic yes we have figured it out this is not a horror player this is a player who has an ability to detect mimics that's the only explanation that there is for using fireball on a candle. <laughs> we fortunately were able to get a long rest in, but after the rest, he immediately found another group of random campers and cast fireball on them, killed them, and looted them. He then cast two fireballs on their scattered corpses to eliminate the evidence. We then jokingly nicknamed him Fire Hobo, Fire plus Murder Hobo, we did warn him though that he may want to chill out a bit when we make it to the capital city as we don't want to get attacked by city guards, assassins, citizen mobs, etc. Our party was already somewhat evil, or at least did evil things from time to time, so morals were less of a concern than survival. After that fiasco, we made it to the capital city to regroup with the prince, and somehow the sorcerer used fireball three more times before arriving, 
who had hired us for the mission. After we got a chance to meet him in secret and get our mission, we went to a city market and we couldn't afford much. It was a bougie city and we didn't have that much money. Fire Hobo was getting frustrated with the high prices until he saw a magic staff being sold that would enhance his firepower. Uh oh, not a magic item for the Fire Hobo. Where could this possibly go wrong? Oh, no, it's going to be totally fine. I feel like whether or not he gets this item or not, this is not going to go well for anyone. Well, this is a horror story, so it would make sense unless all of a sudden he's going to be the hero of the story. I mean, he already knows how to detect mimics, apparently. He's basically the entire protagonist. It cost more than our party had combined, which enraged him, so he threatened the shopkeep. When he called for guards, our fire hobo started, you guessed it, casting fireball. This next sequence would involve probably more fireballs than I have ever seen in D&D in my entire decade playing the game, combined. He fireballed every shopping stall down, he fireballed the crowds of civilians, he fireballed the guards, he fireballed us by accident as we ran away. The whole city block was practically on fire by the time he was surrounded by city guardsmen who forced him into actual combat and knocked him out as the rest of the party fled the city. Okay, I just, I have a quick question. Where was the DM in all of this? Like, why are they allowing this to happen? I mean, they can't stop the player casting fireball. You know, if the player says he wants to cast fireball, DM can't really argue with that. Technically, they can because they are the DM. So they can either create game mechanics all of a sudden that can prevent against it or just tell him, dude, no, this isn't happening. Uh, you can do, but that I feel like that's more reserved for situations where one player is being abusive, is engaging in behavior that is unacceptable on a more social level in real life. Casting fireball excessively is just bad playing and not anything that would be crossing a real life moral line. No, but it does derail the game massively if he's doing it on that scale, because obviously there's going to be consequences. There should be consequences in game for a character to do something like that, which clearly they are because he got arrested. The next session would see the party split with Fire Hobo to start our next mission, a magic item MacGuffin quest basically, as we pretty much wrote him off as a dead man. Most of the session was devoted to the mission at hand, which seemed to annoy Sorcerer. DM eventually did get back to him. Sorcerer was trapped in a dungeon underneath the royal palace as a magistrate came up to his cell and explained the charges that he was facing. As the magistrate was explaining this, Sorcerer said, I cast fireball on that son of a and blast my cell bars down. DM looked kind of surprised and asked, You were just captured. How in the world do you have any spell slots or sorcerer points left? I don't even know how you cast that many fireballs to begin with. He then said, I am a firebender, so I can cast fireball at will. DM laughed and said, that's not how that works. He then tried to argue that because he never uses any non-fire spell or cantrip that he shouldn't be limited in his use of fireball and that it would ruin his character. The DM explained how OP it would be if Sorcerer was able to just cast fireball with no limits. Even when you have innate traits as a D&D character, there's almost always a limit on it. Yeah, there's always a limit on these things. It's quite clear now that this player has little regard for the rules of D&D and is just freely playing the way he wants to. He literally just wants to watch the world burn, mm -hmm. basically. I do think it's interesting that the DM was like, I don't know how you cast that many fireballs in the first place. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be down on the DM, but I do think it's a little weird that the DM wouldn't or somebody wouldn't be like, hey, are, uh, are you allowed to cast that many fireballs in one go? How many spell slots do you have left? Keeping track of your spell slots is obviously the player's responsibility. However, the DM is a little bit asleep at the wheel here and quite possibly should have clocked sooner that you can't cast that many fireballs. It's a level 3 spell and they're a level 6 party. Therefore, he should only have 3 level 3 spell slots and I think enough sorcery points to regenerate one of them, giving him a maximum of 4 fireballs. He then said, Fine, I will just take a long rest and wait for the unlucky magistrate to come back. Well, there was a time skip, so now the sorcerer was playing at the point when his trial was coming up and the magistrate returns. 
He tried to handcuff the sorcerer before he opened the bars, but the sorcerer just started casting fireball again in an attempt to kill both the magistrate and destroy the bars. The bars budged and the magistrate died. So a bunch of guards poured in as he kept casting fireball after fireball until the DM stopped him after realizing he used like five more fireballs than he was allotted. He tried arguing again that he should have unlimited fireballs and the DM was basically ripping the rug out from under him. DM just brushed off again and told him not to sneak in extra fireballs. He then had a constable come, handcuff him and take him directly to the guillotine with no trial since everyone just saw what he did. Yeah, see, if I were the DM, I would be like, okay, how many fireballs does this player get? And like, write it down and keep track as he's casting the fireball, because clearly he thinks he doesn't have to keep track. Yeah, after the first instance, I would have been watching this guy's fireballs very carefully because they were clearly not that concerned with keeping track. And as I said before, it's not the DM's responsibility to keep track of the character sheets. But you do kind of need to keep an eye on players, their spell they're casting, make sure the spells are being cast correctly, especially when they're a new player like this guy. Well, that's just part of your job as a DM is to keep track of the things that your players are doing to make sure, because sometimes just inexperienced players don't know how to use their spells correctly. You know, even experienced players will be like, oh, I'm going to try this. And then it's up to the DM to say, hmm, mm, yeah, I, I think we can do that. Or no, we probably shouldn't. And it's, I'm not trying to be down on, on this DM because I don't think any of this is necessarily their fault, but it's like just PSA to DMs out there. You should be keeping track of things like that, especially when players are like, rules don't apply to me. No, the DM isn't the villain here. Obviously, it doesn't excuse the behavior of this player. The DM is just a little bit asleep at the wheel. Sorcerer out of character was now livid and saying the DM is unfairly killing his character off and that he is at least owed more fireballs to get out of this situation. He begs for just 15 more fireballs and then is basically crying as the DM won't budge and he is negotiating and finally says, okay, three more fireballs. That's literally nothing. Please. But the DM just told him that he can't use fireball but he has a bunch of cantrips and other means to try and get out of this situation, even if they don't end up working. Sorcerer then casts Firebolt on his jar of lantern oil and tries to chuck it at the crowd as a makeshift Molotov. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't read that bit before. It just broke me. <laughs> He's like a fire addict, dude. <laughs> as a makeshift Molotov fireball in order to cause enough confusion to escape. He rolls a four after the DM asks for an acrobatics check, so he creates a slow-moving fire that is easily put out as he is taken to the guillotine, read his charges, and executed. The player is then beside himself, throwing an actual temper tantrum and calling the DM Hitler and saying that D&D is bullshit and nerfs firebenders worse than the M. Night Shyamalan movie and a whole bunch of other ramblings. Wow, full on meltdown because he can't play his character to be firebender, which it doesn't even sound like he's playing it like an actual real firebender either. I have no idea, but you know what? This is hilariously amazing. It's horrible, you know, it's horrible the way he's talking to the DM now and the way he's behaving, but this really tickles my funny bone. I know, you know, I've played with a lot of Chaos characters that are a little fireball happy, but I will never complain about them ever again. This is what these stories are are made for. You, you'd hate to be at the table with this guy, but reading about it is Good. is amazing. And this this is this is the kind of internet cringe we as cringe collecting kobolds love. Well, and I mean, Fireball is a classic, and it's always fun to, you know, make jokes about the use of Fireball. Can you have somebody that actually takes it to the level that we make jokes about? It, wait, people like that actually exist? Live the dream, be the meme. None of us really knew how to handle this situation until he stormed out of the house and slammed the door so hard that the dogs two blocks down started barking. We never saw him or spoke to him again. He blocked us all on everything. The campaign is still going strong though. We all just kind of look back on this story and laugh with bewilderment. It was just so weird to see an actual grown man act like this. TLDR, 
D&D player thinks he should get infinite spell slots to cast fireball on practically everything and everyone he encounters. Throws a tantrum when he gets executed for burning down a city block with fireball. Special little fire snowflake right there. This guy is clearly a bit emotionally imbalanced and took their fantasies a bit too far. I'm really too amused to figure this guy out and pass too much judgment on him because this is just too hilarious and brilliant. I don't care what this guy's issues are behind the scenes. It's just peak internet fireball to the extreme. Every meme that you've ever seen about a sorcerer using fireball. This guy is the butthole of the story 100%. The DM needs to be a little more on the ball and keep a closer eye on things. All in all, this is a hilarious story to look back on. At the end of the day, a good horror story is a story that you can laugh about in retrospect. Obviously, not all of them turn out that way. But I think the reason that we like to read these kinds of stories is just because at the end of the day, these guys are just kind of really entertaining when they act like this. Hey, Hugh. Yes, ma'am. What does the storm giant wear under his clothes? I don't know, man. What does the storm giant wear under his clothes? Thunderwear. And with that, we have definitely not been two, two kobolds, kobolds in, in a, a trench coat. coat. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make the necessary sacrifices to Tiamat. We'll see you next time.